The 1993 movie Jurassic Park, directed by Steven Spielberg, is an all-time classic about a theme park created by John Hammond that allows dinosaurs to coexist with humans. A group of paleontologists, a scientist, a lawyer, and kids are sent to see the park before it is released to the public. However, a storm comes, causing complete chaos at the park. Before we start, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video. The infamous roar of a Tyrannosaurus were a composite mix of a dog, penguin, tiger, alligator, and a baby elephant noise. The very deep alligator vocals act as the low frequency element of the final roar. However, the key part of the sound is the high frequency of the baby elephant. During the recording session, the baby elephant only did the iconic cute high pitched scream that forms the basis of the every T-Rex roar in the film. Rinstrom says, we kept trying to get it to do it again and the handlers were saying, we never heard it do that before. That's a weird sound. The introduction of the T-Rex is a scene expressly planned around the sound design. I think maybe the other directors would have had a bit of a shock moment when you could see the T-Rex showed up out of the blue. Spielberg was great in the T-Rex scene by getting several minutes of tension because you knew what was coming and you knew it because you heard it before you saw it. It's nice when movies think about sound that way. The T-Rex was not only ferocious on the big screen, but around the crew. The T-Rex occasionally malfunctioned due to the rain. Producer Kathleen Kennedy recalls, the T-Rex went into the heebie-jeebies sometimes, scared the crap out of us. We'd be like eating lunch, and all of a sudden a T-Rex would come alive. At first we didn't know what was happening, and then we realized it was a rain. You'd hear people start screaming. The crew had to have a safety meeting about the T-Rex. It weighed 12,000 pounds and was extremely powerful. They used flashlights to announce when it was about to come on to alert the crew, because if you stood next to it and the head went by at a speed, it felt like a school bus was going by. Spielberg wanted the Verostraptors to be about 10 feet tall, which was taller than what they were known to be. However, during filming, paleontologists coincidentally uncovered a 10 foot tall specimen of raptors called Eutheraptors. Spielberg also wanted the dinosaurs to be bird-like, for example, snapping to attention like a chicken. Spielberg liked the raptor tapping its claw to Morse code to any raptor listening. The movie grossed $402 million in the US and just over $1 billion worldwide. Steven Spielberg made $250 from this movie, the largest sum any individual has made from a movie. The kitchen was filmed in two weeks with raptors there most of the time, and a man in a suit some of the time. Anyone in a raptor suit could only do it for up to 15 minutes because when they were bent over in a downhill skiing position, which was very physical. A raptor clicking its toenails was done by a puppeteer walking on raptor legs. Generally, any shot of a full dinosaur was computer generated, but shots of part of a dinosaur were animatronics. Laura Dern was crying for real and was genuinely terrified in which Elliot encounters the raptor in the menacing shed scene because of the way the shot had been constructed genuinely terrified her. Spielberg changed the climax a few weeks before the end of the shoot when he saw early visual effect footage of the first two T-Rex sequences, he realized that more was possible. The original climax involved the raptors being killed by the T-Rex skeleton in the visitor center, but Spielberg felt the audience would have hated him if the T-Rex didn't make one final heroic appearance since he considered the T-Rex the star of the movie. The new climax was completely computer animated unlike the first T-Rex attack. First they enacted it and then added the effects. It was the last scene to be filmed. The T-Rex chasing the Jeep was one of the most difficult scenes to animate. Steve Spaz Williams had to do some research because there was no frame of reference for a running animal of that size. It took two months to figure out how to get it to run. For instance, he would run the sequence backwards to see all of the mistakes. They were also able to use the computer to add a little details to authenticate the scene. For example, the T-Rex running through the puddles of water and leaving splashes. The splashing was filmed individually and then the computer added it to the T-Rex's footsteps. Sets were constructed on five of Universal's largest sound stage and one enormous Warner Brothers stage. Because of the cost, money was saved by purposely not finishing some of the sets, like the entrance hall and the restaurant of the visitor center, making it look like the building is still under construction. The scaffoldings on these sets were not props, but actual tools used by the film's construction crew. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like the video, comment down below about what movie you want to see next, and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video.